coming up this weekend, we're going to have Fight Nights and Sea of Thieves. Really, really exciting stuff. And it's not just going to be at night. It's going to be during the daytime or whenever you play Sea of Thieves, especially if you're into Hourglass. Uh, Fight Nights is going to be happening uh, starting August 31st through September 2nd, 10 a.m. UTC. Prepare for battle, curse-seeking Corsairs this weekend. Seek out combat with your Hourglass of Fate and earn increased allegiance and gold for every faction battle fought. So that's the basic information we have regarding Fight Nights happening this weekend. Obviously, Hourglass-themed. And joining me now to discuss Hourglass, since we have Fight Nights coming up this weekend, I thought it would be very fitting to have a two-for-one video here is Riley Blackfox, Bounty Hunter. How's it going? Doing good. Hi, I'm Bounty. <laughs> Hello, I'm Riley. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm not as much of an expert as you say when it comes to Hourglass compared to these two. They spend a lot of time uh, doing team sloop together and uh, some solo slooping. Sometimes I join them on the brig with mixed results. Sometimes we win, sometimes we don't. But I wanted their opinion regarding Hourglass because they're way more knowledgeable and experienced of Hourglass than me. So I thought, who better to ask about their opinion about what they like about Hourglass, what they don't like about Hourglass, what could be improved with Hourglass, than Riley and Bounty. So Riley, Bounty, what do you like about Hourglass? All right, so I guess we're starting with the pros. The pros. Uh, okay, so what do I like about Hourglass? I like that it's an instant way of getting into PvP. I love that. Especially if you're looking for a fight immediately and you can't find something in free mode, you can just go in Hourglass and go start a PvP match with somebody of the same skill level and same boat. So that's actually kind of cool. I agree. I also think that the rewards from doing Hourglass are very interesting, but there also come issues with that which we'll talk about later. Yeah. I guess the excitement and the satisfaction, it comes when you win. I think the it music is really feel, good when you're like... The music is yeah. amazing. Mm, is I love the music. Right it is so good. For both actions. Yeah, both actions. I, I like both. I mean, we've listened to both of them because Riley and I both love listening to scores of movies and video games, especially video mm -hmm. games when it comes to Riley. And I would say one of the best scores in the game, and there's a lot of really good ones, is the Athena one in Hourglass. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially when you're underwater and you're coming up, or when somebody invades you and you hear that theme. Mm -hmm. uh, it just makes you feel like you're fighting somebody who's really powerful. Music can do a lot of things to games. I agree. Or anything in general, yeah. to be honest. Right. But uh, yeah, I would say the music, the action, I guess the satisfaction when you sing somebody, those are some really good pros about Hourglass. Uh, I guess it's probably one of the better ways to practice on your own PvP skill, because it's you know based on PvP, so it's good practice. Instead of doing That's true. for fights in free roam. It's, it's really good for those people who are not that good and also want to get better. You just PvP over and over and over until you get the, the skills down. So, yeah, I, I would say that. That's actually one of the best things about Hourglass. It's just good to work on PvP. Especially this is a PvPVE game, so a lot of it is, has PvP parts on it. So, better be good to get good at PvP in this game. True, and one of the interesting things is the majority of players don't really like PvP. Yeah, they'll, they'll PvP in like the, the open ocean of the high seas, but not so many players touch Hourglass, and we're going to get into some of the reasons why right now as we segue into the con section regarding Hourglass. What are some things that y'all don't like about it? A couple things I don't like about the Hourglass is the queue times to get into a game which i think is mostly a playstation problem because the game lost a lot of its player base not after launch but a little after launch because of the the excitement went down so hourglass and what well, hourglass not being very popular in the first place it's very hard to get playstation servers to hourglass and actually you know get a game quickly it takes a, a long time yeah so if you play with crossplay off, it it really hurts. Those Q times are gonna be big, unless you get like one of those double money, double RP type of weekends or scenarios. When it comes to like people like that are constantly do it, it's usually filled with sweats. You're never gonna find like many casuals, maybe one or two, but a lot of people that play Hourglass are just people who are already like level 100 and just trying to go for the other gold curse, the golden skeleton or golden ghost. 
it's like the, the amount of casuals that you find in Hourglass are it's not that much, at least when it comes to my case. Yeah, with the skill-based matchmaking in it, uh, there aren't many casuals, like Riley said. So the majority of players you'll find will be Swiss or just longtime veterans. As I'm not even at one of the curses yet, I'm close to one, but all of the games that get probably around 90% are all ghost curses or skelly curses that are my opponents and not anyone super casual. Which is a big downside and very it hinders a lot of new players to actually get into our class because of that difficulty and that skill level gap that stands there right yeah there's nothing more infuriating than starting hourglass maybe you're like level seven or level eight you played a few hourglass matches and you're already getting a prestige level person it's just so infuriating it's like well am i getting you i'm literally like level eight i thought there was skill based matchmaking on this it does happen it's very annoying it is. especially me because i'm like level 40 something i'm like 44 45 on servants and i'm still already getting, getting level 100s i've been getting level 100 since i was well since we were like level what like 10 or something yeah we weren't that high of a level when we would get would get skelly curses and ghost curses a bunch yeah it's really infuriating it's like congratulations you won one match you're going pro <laughs> so we're going the pros and the cons obviously there's quite a bit of cons when it comes to hourglass what are some improvements that y'all think Rare could do in order to make Hourglass better and also more appealing to those new players that are unfortunately being put up against veteran Hourglass players that you already have the you know 100 curse skin or somewhere in between 100 and 1,000 have been playing Hourglass a lot more than them? I would say one thing that they definitely could do is increase the uh, reputation system by at least like 1.5 multiplier or, or two times because the way you earn multi the uh, reputation right now, it is super slow, especially for the amount of uh, fighting you have to do to get one of the curses, it's insane. So imagine trying to get both of them. It just takes too long. So I would say increase the reputation. I would say, uh, and also this is something as well that I, I was thinking, is when you lose your streak, it should automatically cash in the highest number you got. So I, I would say like, if you get like an example like free, and then you lose, it should cash in that streak. So I would say that will definitely help. So that way, if you do lose, then, well, you lost. But at the same time, you know, you at least didn't waste your time, basically. Yeah, you still got some reward out of your playtime. Exactly. So it will automatically cash in everything that you earned. And that, that's pretty much it. I think that's a good solution, especially if you lose, because, like, Losing in this game is horrible. It's one of the worst things ever. It'll make you feel like literally, okay, that's it. I'm going to close the app. That's it. Yeah. It makes you do that. One of the things that annoys me is anytime you guys are doing Hourglass or I happen to join y'all for Hourglass, and we go through all this trouble to, to buy supply crates and go around islands rummaging for cannonballs and other stuff, and we wait in, you know, quote unquote, fast travel for 20, 30 minutes for a match, and we get into a fight, we lose everything and it, it just feels very very demoralizing yeah and another thing i would say as well is that they definitely need to find a way to add more supplies when you lose and then you immediately want to come back in and uh try again basically yeah they definitely need to find a way to make you get more supplies maybe like i don't know like starting an hourglass and the moment you go underwater uh you get a certain amount of supplies like I, I don't know maybe like 99 cannonballs and like maybe like five extra chains or something like that and I guess in, in a way to stop people from like farming that so, uh, you know, people can just be like, okay, I'm going to get these supplies and then leave the hourglass and then keep those supplies. What could happen is basically just the moment you quit hourglass, those supplies disappear. Yeah. And maybe they have it like as a storage crate where you only get a few slots, maybe like three or the top row. You can customize that top row to your liking. So if you want more ammo or more food on board, you can choose that instead of another option yeah, or, or maybe right. like a unique hourglass storage crate that just pops up on your ship that's unique only to hourglass but has you know the the amount that you would need for an average hourglass fight so players no longer had to waste all this time or gold you know in order to get the supplies needed for hourglass fights right and i do like the idea is like once the hourglass is over once you're done whether you lose or you just turn in the hourglass after you know several you know streaks that you went on, that that particular crate just disappears, similar to the emissary flags. Now another issue but. that I know that that we have sometimes is 
when you go into an hourglass fight, it'll put you in a random spot on the map. Sometimes you're lucky it's in the middle of nowhere. Uh, there's no world event happening near you or any like regular events like megalodons or ghost ships or like skelly ships or other players coming after you and third partying. But sometimes this stuff does happen. What do y'all think Rare should do about this? I feel like they should put you on random corners of the map. Instead of like actually putting you like in the middle of like an outpost or or something like by that. A fort. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, or by a fort or something. It should just put you like in a random corner of the map, like the bottom left or the the bottom the you know, the top left or something like that. Some some random corner where no one goes where there's a bunt load of nothing. Where people never go because there's nothing down there. I would say that would be a great area to start. The only problem would be when you get invaded. That's the only issue. Because then it would be wherever the person's getting invaded from and then you can't control the location. So I guess if that were to happen, you would have to remove the invasions, which that would be kind of lame to be honest, because I like getting invaded sometimes. Or in doing the invading. Yeah, I'd rather they keep the invasions in. And I would like to see them be more closed off to just the players fighting each other. But sometimes I do like the random world events because it gives more variety to the fight. But also, I think the majority of players and hourglass players just, they would like a normal fair fight with nothing, no obstruction in their way. Yeah, but, that, that's yeah. more me. I'd rather have a fair and normal fight. Just open ocean. Yeah, just open ocean, yeah. no rocks, no nothing. Just an open ocean and whoever's the better shot and the better crew wins. So yeah, I like the idea of, of doing both. Like if two ships are, are fast traveling into a an hourglass battle against each other they spawn in either the top you know right no not the not the right side because that's the volcanoes but the, the top left or the bottom left side of the map and uh, if you're invading then if you're the one who's going to be invaded then expect it to happen at any time so always be prepared for a ship to in, invade uh, the server to come after you so I, I think there's a way to make both work but when it comes to third partying what should be done about third partying in Hourglass? I would say definitely make both of the ships go in passive mode. Like, the other two ships that are doing Hourglass could still shoot each other. But everybody else who tries to invade, the ships will basically be, like, in transparent. Phantom and ships. Anything, yeah, like phantom ships. So if you shoot at them, the cannon goes right through them. And nothing happens. So definitely those two ships should be not touched. And then after you win or lose, your ships should stay like that in passive mode for like an extra five minutes. Just so you can get, basically get your supplies and get everything that you got from winning without being bothered. I agree. I feel like once you win your battle and you have your five minutes, and if you, you know, get the loot quick enough, I feel like you, and you know, maybe someone's camping outside of the arena, maybe that five minutes of passive mode still allows you to dive to another fight and you're not forced to fight anyone else other right. than, you know, matchmaking. Right, because even if they interrupt trying to get your supplies or something, at least they cannot kill you. So technically you can run away. So I feel like that would be a really good option. Another thing is um, about selling emissary flags. If a player has a gold hoarder, uh, guild flag or whatever that isn't a Reaper's or Athena's flag, I think if you still sync them and you get that flag, I think that's should and you sell that, I think that should still give reputation towards your um, your servants or guardians of fortune. And it shouldn't just go towards the reapers or guardians normally. Because I think it still would be worth selling and not, you know, just be towards the normal factions. I think it should count towards the hourglass factions as well. And once again, uh, thank you, Riley and Bounty, for uh, hanging out with me for a few minutes, talking hourglass. I hope that Rare is listening to everybody that plays Hourglass because I'm sure there's a lot of feedback that they've been getting for a while now uh, from you guys, not just uh, Riley and Bounty, but many other players in Sea of Thieves that do Hourglass. But I really do want them to eventually revisit and improve Hourglass. I agree. It definitely needs a bit of work. It feels like some... some ideas or something just need to be reworked or just straight up outdated and just need to be replaced especially with the way that the game works now or the way that players do certain things in the game it some things just need to be reworked mm -hmm. it's a good mode but just a little bit of work and fine tuning and it'll be perfect yeah because pvp is a very vital part of this game if you go to higher seas which 
is where the majority of players do go, that is a very big part of the game that could happen. And I think they could definitely improve the, P the PvP in Hourglass. Absolutely. I agree with everything you guys had to say. And uh, once again, Riley, Bounty, thank you very much for joining me. Anytime. It's always a pleasure. And once again, coming up this weekend, it's Fight Nights in Sea of Thieves. For any of you into Hourglass or wanting to try out Hourglass, there most likely will be hopefully more people playing Hourglass this weekend because of the increased allegiance and gold for every faction battle that's going to be fought going on in Sea of Thieves from the 31st of August through September 2nd. Your thoughts, views, and opinions regarding Hourglass and Sea of Thieves, welcome, as always, below in the comments section.